everyone welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome I'm Marian and here it's all about art games and technology first of all I want to wish you all a very very happy new year all of you artists and aspiring artists I know this year all your goals will become real and true and you know the best way to do this is um, hard work and learning so we are starting off 2018 with an in-depth tutorial about um, a painting I did last year in summer for an exhibition. Today's video also has a guest appearance by Katie. So at this point you all have probably heard about 3D painting or it's also called the R painting or 360 degree painting. I would describe what we're doing today as painting on the inside of a sphere and I recommend keeping that image in mind while we are doing the steps of the tutorial. Don't be intimidated by the use of 3D software. It's a super easy approach. Believe me, I'm not a 3D artist. I studied 3D back in the day, but I'm a 2D artist and I'm sure you can do this just as well. This project was, to be honest, completely out of my comfort zone. I did not know how to set up a 360 degree painting. I had seen some before, I had seen some tutorials, but I could not for the life of me understand how to use a grid in Photoshop and just paint over it and make it look like the inside of a sphere, I guess. I'm missing some crucial understanding of, I don't know, geometry or something. So I spent um, basically the better half of a day researching and looking for a tutorial for dummies. Let's be real here. <laughs> After a little bit of research, I found a way that includes a 3D software approach rather than just working in 2D. I have worked with Maya before quite a bit, but it's not super advanced stuff. I, I think if you have worked a little bit in 3D before and have um, done some basic, basic modeling, you can for sure do this. I started by creating a cube shaped room and a camera that I set pretty low on the ground because I wanted it to look like as if the viewer was sitting in the middle of the room. Quick spoiler, in the end when I tested it with a VR headset the camera was placed a little bit too low so I would recommend placing it a little higher than I did here. Then I filled my room with stand-ins for the objects I wanted to paint in, like a shelf and a bed and those little cylinder characters. Don't bother with super high poly detailed models. These are just placeholders. You will paint over it in Photoshop anyway later. I placed some spotlights just to have some orientation how to paint in the lights later. and put this um, dark blue Lambert over all the objects. Now comes the part that is crucial for the spherical rendering of the image. You go to your camera attributes, scroll down until you find the section that is called Arnold and open it. Arnold is Maya's new renderer and it will make it possible for us to render the image as if it was on the inside of a sphere so we can later import it into Photoshop. Under the drop-down menu of camera type, you just put in spherical and that's basically it. Then you go to your render settings and make your camera, which I named uh, camera 360 here, um, the renderable camera. For the next part, we can already switch over to Photoshop. After switching over to Photoshop, you will open your rendered JPEG and duplicate the background layer or just unlock it. You open up the 3D panel at Window 3D and there it says create new 3D object. From the various options, you want to create a mesh from preset and the preset you choose is spherical panorama. You can do the exact same thing by going to the 3D menu and hit new mesh from layer 
mesh preset spherical panorama. Don't make the mistake and press sphere and be left wondering why the heck it won't work. This happened to me more times than I'd like to admit. <laughs> so the option is spherical panorama. If you did everything correctly, your rendering should now turn into the 360 degree image. In the next step, I played with the field of view of the camera a little bit, which you can also find in the 3D panel. For my painting, a field of view of 10 worked perfectly, but it really depends on your personal preference. Now, there are two very simple ways to paint over your 3D layer. The first one is pretty intuitive. You create a new layer above your, your background or 3D layer and just paint over however you like. If you now go back to the 3D layer and move it around, you will see that your overpainted part is not part of the 3D environment and just stays as if it's painted on the lens of the camera or something. You will always, before you move your 3D layer, have to merge the above layer down onto the 3D layer to actually make it part of the 3D image. It sounds complicated, but as soon as you try it yourself, it's, like I said, pretty intuitive. And that's also the way I painted most of my 360 degree image. The other approach on how to paint over your rendering is to go directly to your render texture and paint onto that. The way you do this is you go to your 3D panel and click on Spherical Panorama Material. When you now switch over to your Properties panel and click on the little icon next to where it says Diffuse, there's an option saying Edit Texture and you click on that. Photoshop will now open your rendered image in a new file which has a PSB extension. What you can do now is paint on it as if it was any other Photoshop painting. You just create new layers above it. You can use any brush. You can also use layer styles and layer modes and create your paint over this way. As soon as you save the PSB file, and go back to your original PSD file, you will see that it updates and you can see your paint over in 360 Okay, degrees. now that we got the basics down, let's talk about navigation within the 3D space in Photoshop. It is really, really important that you have the 3D panel open at all times and always, always have one eye on where it says scene. Whenever you're in your move tool, the shortcut is V, you can just rotate the scene around like you have seen throughout this video. But for this to work, the part where it says current view has to be active. Otherwise, you will see that your rotation is kind of funky and it kind of throws off the axis. So whenever this happens, go to your history, go backwards, to the last state where it was right, click on current scene and start your navigation from there. Because it's pretty easy to mess up your whole scene this way. So constant vigilance, guys. You should be fine as long as you have current scene activated in the 3D panel and don't use any other navigation tools, which you can find in the toolbar under 3D mode. I just made sure to never touch that part. As you can see, I have started my paint over at this point. I'm still pretty much experimenting, so I'm jumping around from the 3D view into the texture view, trying out different techniques, trying to paste some pictures and paint over them, and using my 3D base as a help with the perspective, because I kinda really suck at painting in right perspective. <laughs> I'm also not focusing on one point of the painting too much. I try to jump around as with a normal illustration or concept art. You shouldn't put too much focus on one point and refine it to a higher detail level while the whole other painting is completely unfinished. Jumping around within the painting, especially when it's 360 degrees, will give you a better feeling of how far you are with your painting and how much further you have to go. Of course, the major light source that comes from the TV in the painting 
is also the focus point so I wanted to have the viewer mostly look at that but with the VR headset you can look in all directions so all parts of the painting had to be more or less equally finished and detailed. In some points of the painting you can also see the seam of where the texture ends meet each other. I tried to cover that up as nicely as possible. The inspiration for this painting was of course my own room back in the day, back in the 90s, when I would play Super Nintendo with my brother almost every day and I wanted to have the feeling of nostalgia in this. My brother liked it, so mission accomplished. The hardest part of the painting was mostly that whenever I was finished with one view and was kinda happy with it, I had to rotate around and find that the other part of the room wasn't finished at all. So this painting really, really took forever to finish. The most fun part, as in I would say many paintings or, or any painting really, was to do the lighting and the rendering. With these 360 degree paintings, I feel like the setup of the initial painting until you can start painting over or sketching over is the hardest part. From then it's just normal rendering, except you have to rotate your way around. So that's how I created my VR painting. In the exhibition I had in October, I actually presented it with a VR headset, which was a really cool exhibition piece because it was just the headset that lay there and people could put it on and experience the room in 360 degrees, which was really, really cool. Um, so I recommend very, very highly that you um, try to see your own uh, painting in this way. I think it's always a cool thing to start off the new year by learning something new so thank you very much for watching and if you are one of the new subscribers I've gained over the last few weeks um, thank you very much for clicking the button and for liking and maybe commenting down below what you want to see in, in the future I have uh, tons of things planned for 2018, but as you know, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, I'm a full-time freelance artist. Um, yeah, so I try to fit in the videos whenever it's possible. Thank you very much for watching and um, good luck with your painting ambitions and I'd love to hear from you.